I'm going to start with a question. The question is simply this. Do the rich, do rich audiophiles enjoy their systems and their music more than we do? You know, money can't buy love, but it can buy a great system. No doubt about it. If you're rich and you're into audio, you can buy the really best, you can buy the best toys. But the question is, do you enjoy them more? Just in, you know, if, if there was an enjoyment meter, do, do you guys, you rich guys, enjoy your music and your system more than we do? So, you know, it, it's not, it, there's no, there's no way to describe, you know, to measure the enjoyment, right? But you could, you could look at it this way. Is the person with a $10,000 hi-fi any less of an audiophile than the person with a $100,000 hi-fi? No or even a $1,000 hi-fi, or even a $200 hi-fi. As long as you're listening to music that you enjoy and you're getting something out of it, you're good. I, I don't know, you know, yeah, you, the thing that audiophiles do is they, they lust after that next thing, that next speaker, the next amplifier, the next turntable that's gonna bring them to uh, greater levels of ecstasy with their music. We've all been there, I certainly have. But in the scheme of things, well, let me just put it this way. When I was in high school and I was 16 years old and I bought my first hi-fi, I couldn't wait to get home from school for a number of reasons, but I couldn't wait to get home from school to listen to music, to listen to Dylan, to, to The Doors, to Led Zeppelin, to Paul Butterfield. I was so... I was devouring that music. I just loved it so much. And I loved the music, but I loved the sound of the music, the way it compared to the sound I had previously heard over, you know, car radios or portable AM radios or FM radios or something. My system, my humble little system, took me to another dimension of music appreciation. Absolutely, big time, I was so in love with the sound I was getting. Now, I don't know if anything in the rest of my life, with all of the great stuff that's passed through this room, could equal that, that intensity of feeling that I had when I was 16 years old, especially, especially with Led Zeppelin. There was something about the sound of Led Zeppelin records, the production, the, the mix, Everything about the drum sound, the guitars, the vocals, everything about it was at another level beyond Dylan or the Beatles or the Stones or any of that stuff. Led Zeppelin's sound was something else. And I just play those records to death because I just wanted to immerse myself in that sound. It was, it was for me as a kid, it was about the music, but it was really about the sound of the music. And those two together were so powerful. So that system that I had, well, what did it cost those days? Maybe $150 or so. So it was, it was cheap, it was humble, but it did it. And do the people, do the lucky souls out there who are very wealthy and can spend without worrying about what it cost on a hi-fi, do they enjoy it more? Now the thing is, uh, everybody's reaction to hi-fi is so personal. They, there might be, you know, maybe there is. Maybe some rich people reach heights of ecstasy from their hi-fi that were far beyond what I heard when I was 16 years old. Oh, my system, as best as I recall, were, the speakers were made by a, an English company called Goodman, but they were marketed under a brand called XAM, which was a, a chain of stores called Corvettes, not like the Corvette the car, but with a K. And uh, it was a, so it was Corvettes XAM speakers, and a Corvette's integrated amplifier, a little 15 watt solid state amplifier, and a Garrard turntable, and probably an Empire cartridge, I would guess. But anyway, that was my humble little system. It took me places that nothing else ever did, certainly before that. And, well, let's say, okay, I'm a more sophisticated listener now. I'm listening to music in a different, deeper way. I understand music way better. I understand music better. I understand music production better. So in that sense, I'm getting a lot out of music now. But I'm just talking about the thrill factor. So let's get back to those rich people. Now, I knew a lot of rich people when I sold high-end audio. <clears throat> they were my customers and people who weren't at all wealthy. But my wealthy customers uh, who were into it, 
read stereo file and the absolute sound and wanted to get the latest and greatest thing. They were into they were they were into gear love, right? That's what they wanted. They were lusting after that next thing that just got the hot review. Some of them would come in and listen, some of them would just buy without even listening to it. They were searching, searching for the lost chord. They were searching for a sound that they read about or fantasized about and would go from one piece of gear, one amplifier, one speaker, whatever, to the next, to the next, to the next. And again, to some degree, it was just about the gear for them, but some of them were actually real music lovers, real deep, deep music lovers. Opera, classical music, jazz, rock, but it, it ran the gamut, but it was interesting to, to see the, the range of what was out there in terms of people who were just totally into gear, totally into music, and a lot of them it was somewhere in the middle. But they loved gear, and uh, they, kept the, <laughs> they kept the audio industry uh, humming in those days, which was certainly a good thing. You know, employment, remember that? So uh, it, it comes in, in different forms. But I have to point out that for wealthy people, they're rich, remember? <laughs> They live in really, in New York City, in beautiful apartments. Uh, they have beautiful furnishings in their apartments. The rug on the floor could be $50,000, could be more expensive than the hi-fi, you know. The rug on the floor, the couch, the paintings on the wall. Their lifestyle, because they were wealthy, was they bought a lot of very expensive, very nice things. That's the way it works, right? <laughs> if you're wealthy, you get to play with good stuff cool you know so uh in terms of how they felt about it all again it varied from person to person what about me well i'm in the, i'm not wealthy at all but i get to play with extremely expensive audio from time to time like that luxman sacd player i did just recently wow what a great piece of gear i thoroughly enjoyed my time with that but i also just reviewed the riga io integrated amplifier 595 dollars paired with my reliable set of KEF LS50s that I've had for years and years now, I was playing that system and I was thinking, this is so great. This is such a beautiful, musically satisfying system. I just love it. So I loved listening to a $16,000 SACD player, but I really love listening to this Riga uh, KEF system. They're both really good. Okay. So good. It, I think we got this figured out, right? Whatever you got, a $1,000 system, a $10,000 system, a $100,000 system, a million dollars, whatever it is you got, enjoy it. Take a break from lusting after that next piece. Uh, listen to more music. Expose yourself to different kinds of music than you normally listen to. It's easier than ever to do that on the internet. And grow, grow as a person, as an audiophile, as a music lover. That should be what we're really chasing, right? Better uh, understanding of sound, of music, and the sheer pleasure that it can bring. That, that is my sermon for today. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you dig, if you dig, if you dig where I'm coming from, if you dig this thing, uh, please subscribe. Uh, it's easy, it's fast, and uh, you'll be pushing me a little, a little closer, a little closer, one by one, to 150,000 subscribers. We're at 140 right now. Uh, we'll get to uh, 150 if present trends continue by mid-November, I'm thinking, maybe, I hope. Anyway, uh, other than that, you could check out the Patreon, which can be found at p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac. And yes, I will link to that directly below. While you're here, though, you could check out playlists for the stuff. If you want more stuff, I got stuff for you to look at. A playlist for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and electronics reviews plus interviews. It's all here for your pleasure. Again, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.